on the first floor, you can exit from main entrance or backstage or from the right and left sides of the floor. On the second floor, you can exit from two exits on the left and right side of the floor. Please exit the same way you entered, but do not use the lifts. Should you find your exit blocked, please follow the standard fire exit signs which will indicate the shortest route. Please close doors behind you and assist anyone having difficulty. Our floor warden and fire marshal will assist you. To ensure the safety of all graduates and their guests, heightened security measures will be in effect throughout the ceremony. We thank you for your cooperation in regards to these important precautions. In the event of an emergency in which we are required to evacuate the building, please vacate the building immediately via the nearest safe exit. On the first floor, you can exit from main entrance or backstage or from the right and left sides of the floor. On the second floor, you can exit from two exits on the left and right side of the floor. Please exit the same way you entered, but do not use the lifts. Should you find your exit blocked, Please follow the standard fire exit signs which will indicate the shortest route. Please close doors behind you and assist anyone having difficulty. Our floor warden and fire marshal will assist you. Al-Bukhari International University adalah universiti yang tidak mengambil keuntungan. Sebenarnya hasratnya adalah untuk menjadi suatu universiti wakaf. The courses is help me about marketing and at the same time management. Sebagai seorang yang jauh daripada keluarga adalah satu cabaran untuk saya datang ke sini dan ternyata ia membuahkan hasil. Al 
Bukhari International University adalah universiti yang tidak mengambil keuntungan. Sebenarnya hasratnya adalah untuk menjadi suatu universiti wakaf. The courses is help me about marketing and at the same time management. Sebagai seorang yang jauh daripada keluarga adalah satu cabaran untuk saya datang ke sini dan ternyata ia membuahkan hasil. Al-Bukhari International University adalah universiti yang tidak mengambil keuntungan. Sebenarnya hasratnya adalah untuk menjadi suatu universiti wakaf. The courses is help me about marketing and at the same time management. Sebagai seorang yang jauh daripada keluarga adalah satu cabaran untuk saya datang ke sini dan ternyata ia membuahkan hasil. Bagi menerima sijil bagi peringkat pengajian asas C, ijazah dan sijil disampaikan Chancellornya Profesor Muhammad Yunus dengan disaksikan pengasas Yayasan Al-Bukhari dan AIU Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al-Bukhari. Dan sebenarnya pada ketika ini semua pelajar yang masuk ke universiti ini adalah pelajar yang dibiayai oleh Yayasan Al-Bukhari. All other student here actually are being sponsored totally by Al-Bukhari Foundation. We also do not accept people who are able to pay. We only accept people who are uh, apa ni, economically deprived tetapi memang pelajar-pelajar yang baiklah. AIU ketika ini mempunyai lebih 900 pelajar termasuk penuntut luar negara. Sementara itu ada penuntut yang sanggup 3 tahun tidak pulang ke Sandakan Sabah atas kekangan keuangan dan pandemik COVID-19 demi mengejar cita-cita untuk berjaya dalam pendidikan. Pengorbanan penuntut Universiti Antarabangsa Al-Bukhari AIU Alustah Kedah itu akhirnya diiktiraf sebagian graduan cemerlang dan penerima dua anugerah khas universiti berkenaan. Kejayaan itu dikecapi Masrani Awang, 26 tahun yang juga penerima anugerah khas Syarifah Rokiah dan anugerah Naib Chancellor pada Majlis Convocation Universiti Antarabangsa Al-Bukhari AIU. Graduan jurusan Ijazah Pentadbiran Perniagaan Pemasaran yang juga anak jati Batu Dua di Sandakan Sabah turut menjadi wakil pelajar berucap pada Majlis Convocation berkenaan. Majlis Convocation Sulung Universiti berkenaan dihadiri Chancellor AIU Profesor Muhammad Yunus dan pengasasnya Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al-Bukhari. Pesanan mak di lagi menerima sijil bagi peringkat pengajian asasi. Ijazah dan sijil disampaikan Chancellornya Profesor Muhammad Yunus dengan disaksikan pengasas Yayasan Al-Bukhari dan AIU Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al-Bukhari. Dan sebenarnya pada ketika ini semua pelajar yang masuk ke universiti ini adalah pelajar yang dibiayai oleh Yayasan Al-Bukhari. All other student here actually are being sponsored totally by Al-Bukhari Foundation. Uh, we also do not accept people who are able to pay. We only accept people who are uh, apa ni, economically deprived. Tetapi memang pelajar-pelajar yang baiklah. AIU ketika ini mempunyai lebih 900 pelajar termasuk penuntut luar negara. Sementara itu, ada penuntut yang sanggup tiga tahun tidak pulang ke Sandakan Sabah atas kekangan keuangan dan pandemik COVID-19 demi mengejar cita-cita untuk berjaya dalam pendidikan. Pengorbanan penuntut Universiti Antarabangsa Al-Bukhari AIU Alustah Kedah itu akhirnya diiktiraf sebagian graduan cemerlang dan penerima dua anugerah khas universiti berkenaan. Kejayaan itu dikecapi Masrani Awang, 26 tahun yang juga penerima anugerah khas Syarifah Rokiah dan anugerah Naib Chancellor pada Majlis Convocation Universiti Antarabangsa Al-Bukhari AIU. Graduan jurusan Ijazah Pentadbiran Perniagaan Pemasaran yang juga anak jati Batu Dua di Sandakan Sabah turut menjadi wakil pelajar berucap pada Majlis Convocation berkenaan. Majlis Convocation Sulung Universiti berkenaan dihadiri Chancellor AIU Profesor Muhammad Yunus dan pengasasnya Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al-Bukhari. Pesanan mak di To ensure the safety of all graduates and their guests, heightened security measures will be in effect throughout the ceremony. We thank you for your cooperation in regards to these important precautions. 
In the event of an emergency in which we are required to evacuate the building, please vacate the building immediately via the nearest safe exit. On the first floor, you can exit from main entrance or backstage or from the right and left sides of the floor. On the second floor, you can exit from two exits on the left and right side of the floor. Please exit the same way you entered, but do not use the lifts. Should you find your exit blocked, please follow the standard fire exit signs which will indicate the shortest route. Please close doors behind you and assist anyone having difficulty. Our floor warden and fire marshal will assist you. To ensure the safety of all graduates and their guests, heightened security measures will be in effect throughout the ceremony. We thank you for your cooperation in regards to these important precautions. In the event of an emergency in which we are required to evacuate the building, please vacate the building immediately via the nearest safe exit. On the first floor, you can exit from main entrance or backstage or from the right and left sides of the floor. On the second floor, you can exit from two exits on the left and right side of the floor. Please exit the same way you entered, but do not use the lifts. Should you find your exit blocked, Please follow the standard fire exit signs which will indicate the shortest route. Please close doors behind you and assist anyone having difficulty. Our floor warden and fire marshal will assist you. Bagi menerima sijil bagi peringkat pengajian asasi, ijazah dan sijil disampaikan Chancellornya Prof. Muhammad Yunus dengan disaksikan pengasas Yayasan Al-Bukhari dan AIU Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al-Bukhari. Dan sebenarnya pada ketika ini, semua pelajar yang masuk ke universiti ini adalah pelajar yang dibiayai oleh Yayasan Al-Bukhari. All other students here actually are being sponsored totally by Al-Bukhari Foundation. We also do not accept people who are able to pay. We only accept people who are uh, apa ni, economically deprived, tetapi memang pelajar-pelajar yang baiklah. AIU ketika ini mempunyai lebih 900 pelajar termasuk penuntut luar negara. Sementara itu, ada penuntut yang sanggup tiga tahun tidak pulang ke Sandakan Sabah atas kekangan keuangan dan pandemik COVID-19 demi mengejar cita-cita untuk berjaya dalam pendidikan. Pengorbanan penuntut Universiti Antarabangsa Al-Bukhari, AIU Alus Takedah itu akhirnya diiktiraf sebagian graduan cemerlang dan penerima dua anugerah khas Universiti berkenaan. Kejayaan itu dikecapi Masrani Awam 26 tahun yang juga penerima anugerah khas Sharifah Rokiah dan anugerah Naib Chancellor pada Majlis Convocation Universiti Antarabangsa Al-Bukhari AIU. Graduan jurusan ijazah pentadbiran perniagaan pemasaran yang juga anak jati Batu Dua di Sandakan Sabah turut menjadi wakil pelajar berucap pada Majlis Convocation berkenaan. Majlis Convocation Sulung Universiti berkenaan dihadiri Chancellor AIU Prof. Muhammad Yunus dan pengasasnya Tan Sri Syed Mokhtar Al-Bukhari. Pesanan mak di Please come in and please take your seat as the event will commence soon. Sila ambil tempat duduk anda kerana majlis akan berlangsung tak lama lagi. Also, don't forget to take your goodie bags and also check what's inside as you will receive a very unique gift which is 
the lembu berlaga sauce from Mojitas Enterprise. Kumpang Bergama Pusaka Bangsa dipalo oleh si anak muda. Hadir Tuan Meriah Suasana, kami menyambat penuh gembira. <coughs> Distinguished guests, member of the university, SM Tunku Abdul Rahman Alor Star, College Vocational Sungai Petani Satu, Academia Science Pendang, and our online participants. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Public Lecture Series 5, Rising Strong, Muay Thai's Transformative Power for Marginalized Youth. I'm Farah, a third-year Bachelor in Media and Communication student from Malaysia. And I am Hikmatullah, a second-year BBA Human Resource Management student from Afghanistan, your host for Public Lecture Series number 5. As you all know, the AIU Public Lecture Series, also known as AIU PLS, represents a thoughtfully assembled compilation of engaging lectures that align seamlessly with AIU's core principles. This undertaking embodies a crucial facet of the university's commitment to disseminating knowledge through captivating public talks. Its aim is to afford the community and the broader public a priceless opportunity to gain perspectives from outstanding speakers, distinguished scholars, and leading intellectuals, covering a diverse range of topics. 
Furthermore, it serves as a vital platform for fostering intellectual discourse and championing lifelong learning. Also, for additional information, you can also watch our PLS on our official YouTube channel. So previously on 31st October, we had an honor to discuss period poverty's toll on girls' education and socioeconomic empowerment with Madam Anja Julia. And today, we are so grateful to have another prominent figure in social business with us, the co-founder of Discovering Muay Thai. Before that, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't notice, there are booths at the foyer next to this hall that you can visit afterwards. And the booths are actually from our own 3-0 club. If you don't know what is the 3-0 club, it is a club that focuses on creating a world of three zeros. So what are the three zeros? The three zeros are zero net carbon emission, zero poverty, and zero empowerment, zero unemployment, sorry. So the first booth that we have is the AIU shop, or the AIU social business shop, which is a social enterprise by Al Buhari International University to promote products from rural areas and also social business products by AIU students. Some of their products are like crispy crepe, kimono cardigan, and a lot more. Next, we have Aroma Revive Booth, firmly committed to environmental issues. Aroma Revive produces Saint Wax tablet or air conditioner from used cooking oils. Should you like to try out a new smell in your room, that's the chance to visit the Aroma Revive booth and buy for yourself. Next, we have the Elite Gallery, which aims to empower underprivileged artists by providing a platform to exhibit and market their artworks. Please check out their beautiful hand-painted t-shirts, and my personal favorite is their hand-painted CD, because you can hang it on your wall and as a decoration to make your room look more aesthetic. We also have Paper Verse, a 3 0 club dedicated to recycling paper that would otherwise end up in environment. This eco conscious club transforms recycled paper into stunning chess sets, beautiful clocks, and an array of decorative tools. Explore their boots and add a touch of, a touch of elegance to your walls. Next. Next, we have the Creative Stitches, where they create crocheted products like bags, hats, baskets and market them to help empower girls. They even crochet flowers, so if you want to buy a long-lasting and sustainable flower for a you know, special someone, you can go for crochet flowers because real flowers will wilt, but crochet flowers will sustain. And inshallah, your love will also sustain. I mean. Now, let's explore the Iprotex booth, a remarkable 3-0 club making waves in the worlds of electronic waste recycling. Iprotec takes used wires and electronics, transforming them into stunning bracelets, necklaces, and bookmarks. Visit their booth and get, your, get yourself some unique and chomel bracelets. Next. Now is the time for my club, Plastigo. Plastigo is a leading 3-0 club at AIU dedicated to the innovative recycling of plastic wastes. Plastigo transformed discarded plastics into everyday usable items such as coaster, container, and handbags. Explore our booths to witness sustainable creativity in action. Next. So the last one we have here is the Eco Soap, where they produce soap from cooking oil. And the best part is that they make the soap in cute desert-like shape. And I know you're going to be hungry later, so if you visit the booth and see some cake-like objects, make sure you know what it is first, okay? Because it might be the soap. And then next one. So this is the recent Tree Zero initiative by AIU Social Business Design Lab in helping Mojida Enterprise Branding, which is to boost your brand awareness to wider market. As I've mentioned before, you might want to check what's inside your goodie bag. Because inside the goodie bag, you will find a lembu berlaga sauce from Mojida Enterprise. For your information, Mojida Enterprise has been selling their sauce since 1979 with their lembu berlaga brand. They have chili sauce, soy sauce, and many more. 
And I believe that this is the right time to suggest and support our local small and medium enterprise. And I believe that it's also the very least that we can do to combat zero poverty and boost this local brand, especially to Kedahan, as this brand is actually made in Baling Kedah. Unfortunately, they don't have a booth here. So if you're interested, you can check out their products. You might want to note it down. So if you're interested, you might want to check their products at Longwan, Tanjung Bendahara, and also at SK Fresh Mart Kepala Batas. Jadi kepada sesiapa yang, in yang ingin mencuba sos produk keluaran Mohida ataupun sos lembu berlaga, anda boleh dapatkan produk ini di Longwan, Tanjung Bendahara dan juga di SK Fresh Mart Kepala Batas. Before we start the event today, I encourage you to join us in watching AIU's corporate video, a compelling showcase that provides valuable insight into the heart of AIU. Welcome to Al Bukhari International University, a unique institution in the peaceful city of Al Ustar, Kedah. With the splendor-rich traditional Islamic architecture, AIU serves as an anchor of knowledge enrichment and dissemination. AIU stands out for its steadfast commitment to diversity, which brings together students from over 60 different nations. Students embark on a transformative journey that promotes a global networking and viewpoint while recognizing and valuing their diverse cultural roots. Unlike typical educational institution, AIU is a place where students live, study and grow, benefiting from top-notch facilities and resources. The university goes above and beyond in providing an all-encompassing experience that empowers students to excel academically and socially. At the heart of the AIU ecosystem, where education builds character, lies the 5A core values – Akidah, Akhlaq, Adab, Amana, and Amalan – that shape the student's character. Social business is the niche area of AIU. Students drive positive change by tackling social economic issues through entrepreneurship. AIU enables graduates to become catalysts of change where students are nurtured to become job creators. In fulfilling the noble objective towards achieving the world of three zeros, socio-economic initiatives and projects are focused on zero poverty, zero unemployment and zero net carbon emission. AIU embraces the principle of the eight-hour rule. Students are encouraged to allocate eight hours for the night's sleep, eight hours for the educational pursuits and eight hours to make a difference by helping those in need. This distinctive approach not only cultivates academic excellence, but also fosters empathy and social responsibility. Excellence in education awaits you in a supportive and innovative environment. Join us at Al Bukhari International University, a place where inspiring minds converge cultural diversity flourishes and social business revolutionizes lives. Together, we are dedicated to building a sustainable world where knowledge, compassion and innovation intersect. Inspiring Minds Thank you for watching the corporate video. And now, let's kickstart our event today by extending our attentive airs to the welcoming remarks from the esteemed Professor Emeritus Datu Dr. Abdul Aziz bin Tajuddin, Vice Chancellor and President of Al Bukhari International Universities. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a warm welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and a very good morning alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarikalah asyhadu anna muhammadar rasuluh amma ba'd yang saya hormati saudara dan saudari pengerusi majlis yang berusia tetamu kita pada hari ini Uh, Mr. Muhammad Khairul Azri Dan isteri uh, Puan Zafirah Selamat datang ke AIU sekali lagi Yang saya hormati Rakan-rakan Saya daripada PPD Kota Star Terima kasih Dan juga kita ada rakan-rakan kita Daripada Sekolah Menengah Tuan Kuala Abrahman Alustar uh, Kolej Vokasional Sungai Petani Uh, Akademi uh, Sains uh, Pendang Dan juga rakan-rakan saya daripada AIU um, Asyik Profesor Dr. Suraya Hanim uh, Pendaftar Madam Nopisah Dan Deans and Head of Department And Fellow Student uh, Pertama sekali kita bersyukur kata ilahi Kerana dengan izin dan limpah kunyanya dapat menemukan kita pada pagi ini Kita amat bersyukur dalam uh, suasana yang ada ini kita dapat bertemu uh, We are grateful to Allah SWT that we are able to gather today uh, Under the program of what we call it uh, public lecture series uh, And this is number five uh, Since our inception, uh, we have done five public lecture series uh, It has, as I mentioned earlier uh, in the previous uh, uh, lecture series That uh, the existence of AIU must benefit the public and this is the platform that we wanted to use the avenue that we bring in prominent speakers people in the field people who has shown success so that they will ever be able to convey to you from the heart to the heart it's not from the book to the book it's not from the book to the heart but from their heart because they experience such a, 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 a meaningful uh, journey in order to make the process a success. This is very important. It's not about theoretical thing. It is about things that happen, things that bring about uh, success, things that hopefully today uh, our prominent speaker will be able to share, to share to all of you, and uh, especially to the student that hopefully by listening to him, you will be inspired. You can see there are things that sometimes we think like nothing, but actually that small thing can contribute uh, to the benefit of the community. And I believe today it is one of the paths or the pathway that can be taken in, in order to help those deprived, those something maybe the community say is a gone case. So I hope uh, you pay attention and will listen to it. For us, uh, AIU, as you can see from our corporate video, we stress a lot on 5A core values. Uh, that is very important, and I think you will see afterward the importance of other than the physical thing. I think the speaker will talk about that in order to bring about change. Here we are, we, are, we are very concerned because we are not going to produce people with only certificate qualified but we wanted to have people who have a holistic in nature who have got characters that's where 5A core values come in but the other important thing that you, can re you will realize is about helping the community because for us getting rich you may be happy some rich people are not happy anyway but helping others you will be happier and today you can see Uh, the thing that uh, the, the speaker will uh, expound to us about helping others. This is very important. This is where the five, the, the eight-hour rule come into play. This is where we AIU are unique from compared to other universities, because we did not stress to you to study 24 hours. Your body have a right over you. You need a rest. You have to study, yes, but not all the hours. This is where when we reward. To, uh, a student during convocation, we do not only look at their CGPA, we do not look only at their academic achievement, we look at other aspects that 5A core values and 8-hour rule invite into you. This is where we 
we are looking. So helping others is very, very important. Remember outside, out there, there are people who need your help. Especially AIU, we took in students who are economically deprived and you will be understanding more the need that you help. And we hope that by you graduating later on, you will be able to help others. Not only that, even now, I know with all the projects that you can see from the screen, are projects that the income will help the others. Okay, I will not give another talk here. I think the most important thing is for us to hear uh, our friend, uh, Mr. Khairul Azri, once again. Khairul, thank you very much. Thank you for making your time to be with us uh, today. And I believe uh, the audience uh, will benefit a lot uh, from your deliberation. Uh, thank you again, Madam uh, Zafira, for, for allowing your husband to be here. Okay? I know you're coming back to your hometown as well. Uh, thank you the com for the organizing committee. I know uh, uh, you are working very hard. Okay, after this you can eat the ketchup and the tomato sauce or whatever it is. Uh, thank you, Suraya, uh, for making it a success. Uh, Inshallah, uh, probably this PS5 will be the end of this year's uh, event. We will plan for uh, more, Inshallah, for uh, next year event. So once once again. I hope that this talk will be helpful not just for IU student but also to the student uh, here. I know uh, students from Academy Science Pendang. Uh, they are very innovative. They are brought to be innovative. Uh, but maybe the science factor is there. But here you will see the other part that can be innovative that will make your science benefit the community. That is very important. No point having a science that destroys the community. We can see now a lot of scientific finding destroy the community. This human factor should be inculcated. This is where AIU come into play. Once again, thank you very much. Um, uh, I hope that this deliberation today will benefit everybody, inshallah, um, that uh, it will be a success uh, uh, in our pursuit of our uh, uh, endeavor in the future. Terima kasih. Wabilahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Emeritus, Datu Dr. Abdul Aziz bin Tajdin, for the remarkable speech. Before we begin, I would like to say thank you for coming, representatives from PPD Kota Sitar, PPD Baling, and College Mara Kolenerang. Thank you for coming here today. And before we begin, I would like to say that today's PLS topic is very interesting and different from the previous ones. I know that we've been talking about social business in PLS, and normally the social issues are solved through social business via goods trading, right? But this time, it's different. This time, we will learn how social issues can solve through sports. And I'm sure it's interesting to see how that works, am I right? I do agree. Today, we are going to explore the connection between sports and social entrepreneurship. Specifically, we are about to unravel the fascinating world of Muay Thai that interconnects with the realm of social entrepreneurship. So, Farah, let's introduce our speakers to the guests, shall we? Of course. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I introduce our distinguished speaker today, Mr. Khairul Azri Muhammad Khalid. With a remarkable background in social innovation, Mr. Azri is the co-founder of Discover Muay Thai DMT, a social business established in 2015 with a noble mission to combat youth unemployment. Through alternative education provided via martial arts, DMT targets beneficiaries such as at-risk individuals, those from the B40 category, orphans, and homeless youth ultimately offering them career opportunities in the health and fitness industry. Additionally, Mr. Khairul Azri brings to the table over 10 years of expertise in social innovation sector. His passion for transforming the lives of at-risk and underprivileged Malaysian youth is evident in his co-founding rule at Discover Muay Thai. As a steering director at SportSam, he plays a pivotal role in steering the organization towards its impactful goals. As a certified Muay Thai trainer, a certified mental toughness coach, 
and a former certified financial planner, Mr. Ezri has been a driving force in advocating for social business concept in Malaysia. He has been featured in various media outlets, sharing his insight on managing at-risk youth and leading the relatively new concept of social business in the country. He has also been featured on AIU Social Business Podcast, so feel free to watch and learn many new things. With a degree in TESEL, also short for teaching English as a second language, Mr. Khairul Azri possesses a distinctive approach to teaching, coaching, and mentoring. His extensive experience encompasses a range of core competencies, including project management, team building, financial, plan financial management, goal setting, personality development, growth mindset, and presentation and pitching skills. This is because Mr. Azri envisions a better Malaysia with wholesome, independent, and productive youth as a driving force of the nation. It is a privilege to have here to have him here today. And without further ado, I invite Mr. Khairul Azri Muhammad Khalid to share his valuable insights with us. Please join me in giving a warm welcome. Emeritus Professor Dr. Dr. Abdul Aziz Tajuddin, Mr. Vice Chancellor of AIU, Associate Professor Dr. Suraya Hanim, um, Deputy Vice Chancellor of AIU, Madam Norpisa Ahmad Issa, Registrar uh, of AIU, Faculty Members. Lecturers, students, and ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning, everyone. Wow. Uh, thank you, MCs, for the introduction. I didn't expect uh, the introduction to be done like super, super detailed. All right. Uh, I think you guys took over my first slide later on. Right. So thank you. Thank you guys for, for, for the introduction. Thank you, Dr. Suraya. Special thanks to you for the invitation. Um, I'm, I'm super honored to be here. Uh, we didn't expect this to be uh, an amazing sharing session um, to close um, the public lecture series. And of course, thank you to each and every one of you who are here today for coming and spending your time for the series. A big round of applause to you guys. Thank you. I'm not going to do like, uh, you know, very formal lecture kind of stuff, all right? I hope everyone is comfortable with me talking very casually, chit-chat, santai-santai je today. Boleh, eh? Can, eh? All right? Because it's my responsibility for this coming one hour, one hour plus, to make sure each and every one of you won't snooze or tidur, all right? So hopefully, please bear with me. Inshallah, whatever that I'm about to share um, will benefit all of us, inshallah. Before I go into the content, please allow me to introduce myself. Okay. I don't like to talk much about myself because, you know, a lot of nitty-gritty nitty details, but I just have to cover one page about myself, all right, and some stories, and I'll get you guys into the journey of how my background, my upbringing develops and started Discover Muay Thai together with my other partners. So yes, I'm Azri from Discover Muay Thai, one of the co-founders and COO of Discover Muay Thai. Um, I'm 35 year years old today, alhamdulillah. And I was born and raised in Segambut, Kuala Lumpur. I'm a KL boy, all right? So for those who know Segambut, 
back in the 80s and 90s, you know how it was. Segambut, Kampung Baru, Kampung Pandan, all these are black areas. So later on, throughout the journey, throughout my storytelling, you will, hopefully you, get, you can connect the dots of how my upbringing, my background, leads me to where I am today and how Discover Muay Thai is, is established. They tak nak I introduce myself. Okay. All right. Next one. Uh, yes, like, like they um, you know, introduced just now. I have a bachelor's degree in TESOL, teaching English as second language from UITM Shah Alam. All right. I was supposed to be a teacher, but, you know, um, education um, environment in Malaysia, in schools especially, right? Um, um, I, I prefer to do um, other things that somehow I can still use my knowledge and practice whatever that I learned in TESOL. I'll talk more about that later. I'm also a certified Muay Thai coach, Khan Ten. If you know Taekwondo, if you know Karate, they have all the belts, right? Yellow belt, yellow, uh, you know, white belts, yellow belts, blue belts, and so on and so forth. So in Muay Thai, you know, this martial arts from Thailand, we have Khan system, K-H-A-N, Khan system. And I'm currently at Khan 10, 10 or 11. I also, I cannot keep track already, right? Um, I'm not a fighter. I haven't competed in, 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 in any tournaments before, but I'm a coach, all right? I coach my beneficiaries, I coach my, my fighters um, for fights and whatnot. I'm also a certified mental toughness coach from MTRI USA. Um, this, I think, is a very crucial sub-skill of mine in which to educate and to train young people on mental toughness. You can be physically strong, but your mental koya cannot also, all right? So yes, this is um, one of my um, certified certification. I was a former assistant manager, youth engagement department, My Harapan. I'm not sure. I think some of you guys have managed to engage with My Harapan, a youth trust foundation organization, right, in some of your programs. I'm sure AIU have, have worked with them before. And um, from there, I met my two other partners, and then we co-founded Discover Muay Thai. And recently, I was appointed as one of the directors for Sports Social Enterprise Malaysia, um, to encourage and to develop more sports-based social enterprise in Malaysia. Because currently, at the moment, sports social enterprises in Malaysia is very, very, very few. You know, Discover Muay Thai is one, and we have maybe one or two more. That's it. So we want to encourage more um, development of sports-based social enterprise. So that's about me. And a bit more. All right, in my next few slides, please bear with me. The two pictures, I'm not sure whether you guys can see clearly, all right? On the left and on the right are the two extremes of my upbringing. The picture on the left was my homies, my friends, my, you know, um, the people that I grew up with in Segambut. They stay around my neighborhood where Segambut, we have a lot of squatters. Back then, eh, we have a lot of squatters. Squatters are setinggan. I'm not sure. Nowadays, dah jarang dah ada setinggan. So in Segambut, there's a lot of squatters, a lot of PPR flat, low-cost flats. So these are my friends from Segambut, from where I live, my neighborhood. Right? So on extreme end, on the left, my friends are you know, okay lah in education. Most of them are, you know, some couldn't write, some couldn't do maths, some just couldn't care less to, to, to learn English. Some were dropped out of school from the age of seven, eight years old. Some of them couldn't afford to go to school. Some of them were kicked out of school because of various disciplinary issues. And yes, I'm friends with them, but yes, I was also involved in some of these activities back then, right? So this is one extreme of how I grew up back in Segambut KL. And on the right, oh, belum lagi, sabar, sabar. Relax. 
on the right, as you can see, my friends at school, right? So my school is a bit far away from, from where I used to live, right? Um, as you can see, you can see, you know, multiracial from various backgrounds, Chinese, Indians, we are all together. And I was, alhamdulillah, blessed with, you know, um, okay lah, mental capacity, right? So in school, I was doing okay, all right? So I was in the first, um, um, in front of the class, and together with my friends. So that's where I learned to speak English. That's where I learned, you know, other cultures, you know, my Indian friends, Chinese friends. So these are the circle of friends I have in school. So as you can see, the, 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 the extreme end on the left is scaling towards the socially negative ones. And the, the extreme on the right is my goody goody friends, you know, who are very well educated, who are doing well in chess and, and whatnot, and so on and so forth, right? So, yeah. Alhamdulillah, after I um, finished my high school, I graduated in, in, in UITM, TESOL, bachelor's degree. And I wish all you guys who are graduating soon, right? I heard uh, you guys will have your, your, your graduation ceremony soon. Um, but in UITM, I was not just about going to class, go back, do homeworks, do assignments, that's it, right? First year, first batch, first semester, second semester, maybe. But eventually, because TESOL is such a, you know, very well-rounded course, I was very, very active in the clubs and societies in UITM, right? So that's where I learned um, theater, drama. I learned about um, volunteering. So I joined some of the events as volunteers um, in debates, in piala, debat perdana and whatnot, so you name it, all right? So I was very, very active. And that somehow taught me, you know, all these amazing organizations in Malaysia. And that's how I got to know my harapan, the Youth Trust Foundation, all right? I'll explain more about that. But during my study years, one of my best moments was this. I'm sure you guys can't see me there because I was like, part of the students, right? <laughs> right? So I was teaching at this school, SMK Bukit Bintang, Petaling Jaya. Bukit Bintang Boys School, Petaling Jaya. I was teaching Form 2 students. So, yeah, I was one of them. I was wearing that blue batik shirt. Yeah. Um, why I said this is one of my best, best moments is because from here, I knew it that, you know, I love to teach. I love to engage with young people. I love to engage, you know, the next generation, imparting knowledge, imparting wisdom to the next generation. So this is where I learned this stuff, right? And it's my passion to really share with the young people. So throughout my sharing session, I will share some key takeaways and golden nuggets. Hopefully lah. Kalau you guys, it's nothing, you know, magical, nothing extraordinary, but it's just something for you guys, at least at the end of this session, can take away with, right? So my first key takeaway is know yourself, especially our friends, adik adik from the schools, right? And everybody. Please know your strength, your weaknesses, your passion, what motivates you to wake up in the morning every day. All these questions are so important and alhamdulillah, I was lucky to, to discover this very early. Not so early, even though during my study years, I wish I have discovered it way earlier, but it's still early because I was not in the real world yet, not in the working world yet. So during my studies, I discovered what's my strength, what's my weaknesses, my passion. I really, really love to build young people. Because I saw my peers from the, the previous picture just now. Some of them were lorry drivers who just go to work in the morning, early morning, and come back at night, super late night. And that's their routine every day. Right? So I want to help more and to, to deliver change for these people. 
So that's number one. So from my university years, that's where I got to know my Harapan Youth Trust Foundation. It's an amazing organization, right? So this was my, first, my very first event with my Harapan. As you can see, um, I wore that butterfly wings at the back because we are doing this social business event together with um, our distinguished guests, which I'm sure you guys know later. I, share, show the, I will share the picture. Um, this was back in 2011 where I joined my Harapan. I was under the Youth Engagement and Capacity Development Department. Right? So my job revolves around engaging people from all walks of life. Top left corner, that's one of the sessions uh, we did, the engagement session with one of the PPR, Project Perumahan Rakyat, the low-cost flats in KL. Right? So these urban poor communities, um, after they were you know, um, they left the squatters. Government made these PPRs for them to be replaced and to be, to, to be staying at the flats, right? So that's one of the events we did. We have many, many events, right? On your right top is one of the sessions with the school students. We do programs, we do capacity development, we do trainings, we do workshops. Just to engage young people, school students especially, in giving that awareness that, hey guys, you guys are young. You guys are full of ideas, full of energy. Do something about it. All right? So back then, 10 years back, young people won't have so much platforms as it is now. So my Harapan, at my Harapan, we provide that platform of young people to brainstorm ideas and actually take it and make it a reality. Right? Bottom left, one of sessions with, with social business as well. And... Bottom right, um, it's a brainstorming session with um, some Polytech college. So my job scope for the past 10 years, it's all about engaging young people, right? And empowering them and getting them to take action. Be the change maker in your own community, in your own capacity. So that's where I met Professor Muhammad Yunus in the middle, right? So he also wore that same butterfly wigs that I wore just now in the picture, right? So the theme of this event was um, um, change, right? So from a cocoon and then you change into a, a very beautiful butterfly, right? So that's why we wore all these um, amazing wings. Lah. And he's like super chill, super, very sporting and, 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 and you know, um, very laid back and joined the, the, the theme together with us. So that's where the first time I met Professor Muhammad Yunus for the first time. And I'm sure you guys know this, he's an amazing, amazing guy, all right? I also had the opportunity to visit him in Bangladesh, you know, center, and to see on my, with my own very eyes the amazing initiatives, the group of companies, Gramin, right? They have many group of companies, how they, do it, how they do it in Bangladesh. The amazing community engagement, community activities they have. So it was my privilege, I was honored to witness that back in 2013 or 14, if I'm not mistaken, right? So from here, cut things short, is where I met, like I mentioned just now, my two co-founders, all right? So on the left is Sanol, and on the right is Imran. So the three of us get together in my Harapan, because I was in my Harapan sometime in 2011, Sanol joined in 2013 and Imran came in in 2000, late 2014, early 2015 like that. So we all met in Maharapan together and with the knowledge of social business, Imran had that experience he had in Thailand where he witnessed amazing, um, from Muay Thai background, right, how it all came about, in which later on I will share a, a short video, what we do at Discover Muay Thai for those who don't know, right. So the rest is history. That's, this is where we, we meet together, we brainstorm, and we 
um, execute the project. So second takeaway, whenever you have this amazing idea, AIU students, I'm sure some of you here aspire to be entrepreneur or social entrepreneur, right? School students, I'm sure you guys have all this amazing passion and aspire to be someone. So once you have those amazing ideas, you must plan how to execute it well. I put plan there because we need to plan. If we fail to plan, you plan to? You plan to? Fail, right? But there's a caveat there. Don't spend too much time on planning until you don't have time to execute. Because you fikir, fikir, oh, ni kalau macam ni, macam ni, oh, if like this, you know, if this doesn't happen, oh, what's the plan B? It's good to have those plans and some risk mitigation plans. But don't spend too much on just planning and just brainstorming and don't do anything about it until you are, you know, got distracted and do other things. Execute, immediately execute, all right? And then go back to your drawing board and definitely the last one is very important, deliver impact. It doesn't matter, environmental impact, social impact must be included in our current um, business scenario, all right? So that's second golden nugget. With that, I would like to share with you a short video of the very first batch we did of Discover Muay Thai Academy. So enjoy. dah pun dibuang um, daerah pertanyaan utama suka melepak kerja malas lawan cakap mak, abang my weakness is actually my weakness is before I am so shy person and I am so scared to speak uh, with uh, foreigner and everyone to speak mak saya cakap dulu pergi sekolah saya ponteng pukul orang lagi buat jahat, lagi buat curi, benda-benda lain lah. Kalau isu gangsterism, bully ni bagi saya besar. Besar kalau diri kita tak terkawal lah, itu boleh besar lah. Kalau pandai manage diri, mungkin itu bukan masalah besar. The, the important, the, the, the things that I want the boys of Discover Muay Thai Academy to learn is that respect goes way beyond than just in the Muay Thai ring. It is being respectful to the elderly, to your teachers, to your parents, to your, to whoever, to your friends. So, so after four months, we hope that the boys can adopt this very crucial and important value, which is respect. Honor. 
bila saya dapat benda tu perubahan tu saya macam ih tak cukup abang bulan ni nak tambah lagi lah kalau boleh nak tambah lagi tapi apa abang pun dah tetapkan 4 bulan kan so saya rasa saya dah bersedia untuk adab dunia luar nak keluar balik saya nak ubah diri saya tak nak jadi macam dulu All the memories keep flashing back. Back in 2015, that was the first batch of students, of beneficiaries, of a group of young people who were labelled as sampah masyarakat, who were labelled as tak guna, budak-budak tak boleh pakai, nuisance to society. Yes, they were. But throughout my engagement session with this group of guys, because I used to be in their shoes, we believe and we trust that these guys, they are not all bad, right? Our school system may not be able to address their different kind of learning. Most of them can't stay in one room for more than 10 minutes. The attention span is very, very short. And they learn by doing. They learn by watching. They learn by observing. They learn by, by, by experiencing different, different events or things. So they can't sit down and listen to teacher. Yada, yada, yada. They got bored very easily. All right? So these guys were rebellious because of their learning capability. So this picture is where our academy is at, right? If any one of you have been to KL before, Bukit Bintang, the very famous Jalan Alo is where you get your amazing seafood, your Arab food, your whatever. It's the heaven of, you know, uh, Malaysian food lah. Jalan Alo, Bukit Bintang, all right? You can see at night full of people, thousands of, you know, um, um, people from all over the world came there. And at the top, I don't know whether the laser is able to point, at the top there, the fourth floor, as you can see, that's where our academy is at. All right? And if you don't know Jalan Alo back then, five, ten years back, it is also a black area. It's famous with drug issues, prostitution, homelessness, drug, you name it, everything was here. Gangsterism, this was the place, right? It's Chinese um, um, community, Jalan Alo is, is, is predominantly led by the Chinese community, but they have Malays and some Indian group as well who are, you know, always, always, always making uh, issues lah there, all right? Let's keep it at that, <laughs> all right? So that's where our academy is at. So in 2015, we started Discover Muay Thai. These boys we take from all over, the Malaysia, all over Malaysia, and this is their routine. As early as 6 o'clock in the morning, they wake up, the Muslims will pray, subuh, and the non-Muslims will help cook like breakfast, right? And they will jog from the gym to KLCC, about five kilometers. And at KLCC, you know the taman? They will go for a few rounds. So the total jog mileage would be around eight to 10 kilometers in total every morning. That's their first routine of the day. Next, come lunchtime, they will cook together as we will bring, we will give them all the raw materials, raw food, and we were lucky enough to partner with Food Aid Foundation Malaysia, where they contribute all this amazing raw food, you know, wheat, flour, um, rice, oil, and, and, and whatnot, right? So they have to cook themselves, the boys. 
this activity by itself fosters that unity, that teamwork among them. And we were lucky, at least, at least, at least, for each batch, there was one individual who knows how to cook at least. Right? We were lucky. Why we were lucky? Because we don't have to find a cook or you know, a chef to, to, to cook for them. Right? We ourselves don't have time to cook for them. So yes, that's, that's um, how it is. So we get eight of these boys cook together and jog together in the morning, in the afternoon. But it's not just that. We have classes as well. Top left, that's Pon Zafira, <laughs> our English teacher who teaches English twice a week. It's not your everyday English in school where you learn grammar, you learn, you know, all these schema things, lah, right? At the academy, you learn basic communication skills, English communication skills, how to greet each other, how to ask, you know, how you are, where you're from, basic, basic, basic communication skills. Because some of them couldn't even write in English, right? So with this exposure, of course, with the help of our amazing teacher, it spurs their interest to learn English, right? And on the top right, that's our counsellor, Ibu Dalila. Why I call her Ibu? Because she is, her role in the academy is as a mother. Some of these boys don't have that platform, don't have that shoulder to cry on. So Ibu plays a very crucial role in consoling them in getting their spirit back up and getting them to work as a team. Top, uh, sorry, bottom left is their sports science, recently introduced in batch uh, number four, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in 2021. Um, they learned sports science because after they graduated, at least they have some basic knowledge on sports science, right? And of course, on the, top, on the bottom right, uh, we have our Islamic and moral uh, teaching class. Um, in that picture, if you guys know Dato Sri Zul Kifli Al Bakri, so we Alhamdulillah he partnered with us since batch number three, and he always come to the to the gym to the academy to teach these guys, you know, moral values, teach the elder, uh, respect the elderly, respect your friends, basic akidah, basic akhlaq, like the five A's that Prof mentioned just now, right? So we were very, very lucky to have him on board. And all normal, lah, these guys lah, at this age, they have so many questions regarding religion, right? Ustad, what happens if we do this, this, this? Ustad, my girlfriend like this, 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 Ustad. If I want to get married, you know, lah, all these amazing, amazing questions will come out. And he will patiently <laughs> address each one of them, alhamdulillah. Right? Amazing, amazing. That was result. Next, besides all these classes, once a week, every Wednesday, for three to four hours, every Wednesday, they have to do volunteering activities. Like you guys, eight hours you guys have to do, you know, um, activities for the community. They have to do volunteering work at our SE friends at their office, right? So we have many, we have BGBG, we have Mareka, we have Eat Shoots and Roots, we have Masala Wheels, we have uh, Silent Teddies, all these amazing social enterprises based in KL, and they will go and volunteer their time and helping our friends um, in whatever chores or whatever work they, they have, right? So this will somehow expose them to things that beyond the gym. It's beyond punching and kicking. It's exposing them with all these extra skills, life skills that inshallah, if use it right, can help them in the long run. On the afternoon, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, this is where the most enjoyable session. It's the Muay Thai hardcore session. Right? So in the morning, they just jog and then do some light you know, fitness stuff. In the afternoon, they train with three times World Muay Thai champion from Thailand, Cruz Latan, where we have at the, at the academy. They do back works, they do sparrings, they do uh, back work, pad work, you name it. Whatever routine, whatever training in Muay Thai, 
They will do every day, twice a day, for four months. Yes, it builds their physical capacity, physical fitness, but most importantly, the mental side of things, right? When you spar with your friend, how to control your emotion, your anger. Don't just punch your friend with 100% power, right? And with their background, it's really, really hard to do this. So we managed to, you know, get them to really control. And Muay Thai is also when you punch the back, when you kick the back, not just for them, for all of us. It's a very, very positive way to release your aggression, your negative energy, your anger towards your boyfriend, ke, your boss, ke, whoever lah, huh, that you have. Punching the back, kicking the back will release all this, um, you know, uh, positively. So that's how Muay Thai actually develops them. And one more thing about Muay Thai, as I'm sure other martial arts do as well, as it teaches discipline, it teaches respect. Right? In the video Imran said just now, in Muay Thai, respect is the number one value. All right? You respect your friends, your opponent, your teacher, and others. At night, since we are located in Bukit Bintang, we have all these amazing people from, you know, all these amazing countries. We have clients from Brazil, from, from US, from the States, from um, Africa, from you name it, all right? Because apart from eating the food galore downstairs, they have to burn it, right? And most of them are expats. They work in KL, you know, for at least three months, one year, two years, some of them even longer. So at night, these boys, the eight beneficiaries that we have, some of them will do as, will work as pet holders, assisting the trainers. Some of them will work at the counter to take care of the admin stuff. You know, if customer comes and pay, they have to record it and everything. Some of them will do the cleaning of the gym. Some of them will do PR. They will have to go downstairs at the parking lot, wait for our customers, help pick their bag up, and go up to the, to the gym. Customer service. And they will rotate these different areas of job scope every night so that everyone will learn different, different skill set. Next. The third takeaway. Be patient, good things take time. Alhamdulillah, since 2015, it's been almost eight, nine years, all right? We have managed from 8% per batch, we have managed to deliver second batch, third batch, fourth batch, fifth batch. And this year, we managed to expand in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, and we managed to get 16 individuals per batch. Thank you. And concurrently, while Sabah is happening, in KL also, we are empowering another 16 of young people. So altogether, 32 this year alone, Alhamdulillah. It's not easy to educate parents, to educate our corporate partners. Guys, Muay Thai, guys. When you heard Muay Thai, when you see Muay Thai, the first thing that came to your mind was what? Uyo. It's gory, it's bloody, it's extreme, right? So in this eight to nine years, we managed to, alhamdulillah, convince our corporate partners, our, our, our stakeholders to invest in Muay Thai because Muay Thai doesn't just give you that, that, that you know, the facade of extreme and bloody and gory. It is for professional fight, but it's beyond that. It's the values that you learn through martial arts. So aspiring entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, good things take time, guys. Don't rush into expanding too big, too quick. I have the privilege to know some of your, you know, amazing um, social enterprise, social business here, AIU, Life Shop, right? Bintang, are you here, Bintang? Not here? Oh, Bintang is not here. It's okay. All right? So, I know you guys are here doing amazing things, right? 
But I hope after you have graduated from it, you take it with you, right? Expand further, develop further, impact more people, more communities around you. And after eight, nine years, the next video is our latest batch of students that consists 16 of um, underprivileged youth. And please enjoy the latest video of batch, the MT Academy Batch 7. These boys, they are battling their demons. They were traumatized by many, many issues. Some of them were physically abused by parents, by teachers, by whoever. All this trauma, they are struggling in fighting these issues. And they have no one to share, no one to get help. I don't remember the story of my father. I don't remember the story of my father. Asal kosong lah hidup. Saya buat benda yang tak apa-apa nak baik lah. Saya jual dadang untuk tunjukkan mak saya yang saya ni boleh beri garing. Biasa lah, anak nombor dua kan. Rasa dekat tengah sikit sebab ia ya, kena mengalah dengan adik-adik, kena hormat abang. Kita ni rasa macam kurang kasih sayang. So at the academy, we have our counsellor. Me personally, my routine with them is definitely I will spend at least one or two sessions, one to one session with them, just to dig deeper into the personal issues. Saya bergandul lah, bergandul dengan ibu. Dia kata dengan saya, suatu hari nanti kau dapat pergi tempat lain, mesti kau rindu ibu. Saya kata saya tidak rindu. Langsung saya terindu ibu. Belum tu kami degil sikit, nakal. Bila kami dapat tawarannya, kami isi pandah pun dengan family kami. Kami diam je lah. Within that four months, at least this huge burden of them battling the demons, right, um, can be addressed. If not necessarily, you know, solve everything 100%, at least we manage to address or even, you know, help them partially. Saya dengan family ni agak renggang. Memang agak renggang daripada daripada arwah abah saya meninggal. Sedih juga lah sebab bila datang sini tengok kawan-kawan yang lain, family yang berat. Saya fikir memang balik daripada akademi ni saya nak jadi orang yang berjaya orang yang fikirkan masa depan saya harap saya tak balik dekat dunia lama saya circle lama saya Saya menangis daripada airport KL sampai ke Tawau jumpa ibu, cium kaki dia tapi at time tu Alhamdulillah ibu saya macam walaupun saya banyak buat salah dengan dia tapi seorang yang macam suka maaf dengan saya saya banyak kurang ajar dengan dia macam saya bersyukur lah Kami menam-nam termaaf dari ujung rambut sampai ujung kaki. Sepanjang nenek kami jaga kami, kami ada mula salah melawan kata nenek. Cik dengar apa yang apa yang dia tegur. Kami susah gila mau minta maaf dari nenek. Right, for this current batch, um, it's a bit unique. The dynamic and the background of the participants we managed to attract the university students. The, the mixture of backgrounds in this batch is amazing. Compared to the previous batch, this batch, how they get together, the whole cohesiveness of these boys is on another level. So for me, that's, that's amazing uh, for this batch. They ran pretty fast. Yeah, I'm impressed with them, you know? Considering only four months, some people can't even like punch right after four months. So yeah, big ups to the coaches and them. Like, impressed. If you keep going, you'll definitely get there. For all the DMT boys, my message is, um, I know you guys have been through a lot, you know, been through a lot of hardships. Like, I would say use it as motivation, you know? Like everything you guys have been through, all the bad times, use it as motivation to work hard and achieve your dreams. 
hard work definitely beats talent. Four months and to just give up everything and come and stay here. And whether you want to be a fighter, whether you want to be a trainer, whether you want to do something completely out of Muay Thai, just believe in it and do it. And always use this time that you had here to like keep you grounded. And once you leave here, like just keep going up. Perasaan saya tu saya happy lah dapat jadi captain kat sini. Satu lagi saya happy sebab rasa kasih sayang. Dapat rasa kasih sayang bukan seorang, ada berbelas adik. I would like to personally thank you guys first because it's not just you guys learn from the academy. The abang-abang, all three of us are also learning from you. I hope you guys uh, are going to be successful in your own way. Insyaallah. That's our latest Academy Batch 7. Um, recently completed, I think last month, we managed to um, complete it, do the graduation ceremony. It was very touching. Every batch of the MT Academy graduation ceremony is a crying fiesta because that's when they go to their parents and kneel to the parents and sujud to the legs of the parents and you know, you see all these amazing scenes that you don't see anywhere else, right? So, I'm not sure whether if some of you know Jojo, Johan Ghazali, the youngest ever um, fighter to, won, to win a contract in one championship. Inshallah, inshallah, please pray for us. Next year, we are going to collaborate with him and his gym, Rentap Muay Thai, and expand in Sarawak. Inshallah, please pray for us. <laughs> Talking about Sarawak, so now I'm going to share the success stories. Not all of them, because it's going to take, you know, maybe the whole day. But I'm going to highlight some of them that um, have been successful in their own way with different, different areas of their interest. So the first one is Aman Koboy from Sarawak, Bintulu, Sarawak. Aman Koboy, back then, before he joined the academy, he used to, you know, rempet, betting on, on illegal races, um, drug abuse, and so on and so forth, all right? But his passion, his interest in Muay Thai is phenomenal, right? So during the academy, when you have English class, we had all, all of the, the, the classes that I mentioned, lah, they will sit like at the back and very quiet and just couldn't care less. Yes, he was there physically, all right? But he's just there. But in Muay Thai classes, he will be the first one to be there. He will be the first one to set up all the gloves and pads. He will be the first one to wake up the, 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 the trainers, Right, it's time for our training. So his passion in Muay Thai is really, really, absolutely amazing. And Alhamdulillah, after graduating the academy, from the fights that he have in, in Bintulu, in Sarawak, he now get the exposures. And Persatuan Muay Thai Malaysia, the National Muay Thai Association, start to see him, start to notice him. And amazingly, in 2019, he represented Malaysia for the SEA Games Philippines and bring back silver medal for the country. Sorry. Yes. From someone in Bintulu, Sarawak, to the eyes of the world, right? So now Aman is actively competing and coaching as well. He has his own gym with his partner. And... Um, we, in Muay Thai, he's like our current top role model for the boys, right? Next one. Shame from Batch 4, 2021. Shame also had similar issues, drug abuse, addicted to alcohol, partying, clubbing, right? Um, but after attending the academy, learning the entrepreneurship skills, learning many, many life skills that he learned from at the academy. On the right, right now, he's an entrepreneur. He's co-founder of this brand called Hitam Puteh, 
right? Please look for him, itamputeh.co, in your TikTok, in your Instagram, whatever. Please follow him. And for those of you who are in, on, on TikTok, his brother in front, I'm not sure whether you, you, you recognize him. He's the infamous Abang POV or your, your internet boyfriend where he used to, you know, he always posts, you know, uh, content on TikToks and he's very, very um, uh, famous now, right? So these brothers are now entrepreneurs having their own clothing brand and perfume and so on and so forth. So that's Shami from Batch 4. Next one is Azme. Sorry, back one slide. Yeah. Azme from Batch 3. These pictures were taken at his house in Meru Klang, in Selangor. So right after he graduated academy, his passion in Muay Thai, in teaching Muay Thai is very, very high. So at his house, you see, very basic, some punching bags. That is the, what is this? It's a barbell <laughs> made out of, you know, wheels and, and crankshaft and, and whatnot, right? Barbells. Because he doesn't have that money to invest in a proper barbell. And uh, this is a bit dark, but you can see all the tires for training, Muay Thai training, right? And we have been observing him, him for a couple of years. And Alhamdulillah, in 2021 or 22, right after the pandemic, we invested in him and our third branch in Setia Alam, the MT, is led by him, Azme, our, from our batch three. So the gym is not, he doesn't just work as a head trainer, he also owns the gym as our partner, right? So that's him at the gym, having fun with, the, uh, with our clients. And um, he also develops fighters from Klang, right? And compete on the highest level. So that's another, for us, it's another success story. Next one. Wow, this is, I think, the most, not to say heart-wrenching, but inspiring as well. Introducing Ibni Arabi. As you can see, this guy, uh, I think he was 19 years old at this time, 19 or 18 years old. He was a homeless boy on the streets of Chowkit KL. Homeless, tak ada rumah. He's been homeless for two years away from the family because of some issues. His father was in prison, the mother went through some rehab thing and, and whatnot. So he rebelled and he left the house and mingled with some, you know, punk groups and so on and so forth. I, I wouldn't share so much, but that was him when we found him on the streets, Ibn Arabi. When my team, Sanol, want to approach them and tell about the academy, the opportunity that they can have at the academy, all of them were scattered and ran away from my partner, Sanol, because he thought my partner was a cop, was a police, right? And then, of course, being Malaysian with a cup of tetare, with a cup of teo ice, they came back and they, they finally um, able to meet us and we explain about the academy. And on that registration day, Ibn Arabi alone came. The other friends just couldn't care less, right? And from there, he managed to attract more of his friends. During weekends, we have to open up our gym to his other homeless friends, right? Some of them were wearing the boots, just jog together with, with the boys, right? They just want to come to the gym to have shower, to take picture with our belt, you know, the championship belt and so on and so forth. So it's like a safe space for these guys where they are not labeled as, you know, budak jalanan. They are not labeled as whatever label that the, the society is giving them. And right now, Alhamdulillah, Ibn Arabi, is working at Pizza Hut, having a better drive, having a better economy for himself and his family. Rather than back then, he was just loitering around, smoking pots, sniffing glues, gum, and so on and so forth. So for us, even though he's working at Pizza Hut, it looks eh. Apalah sangat, right? Kerja kat Pizza Hut. But for us, 
to turn him from, you know, after two years of being homeless to this is just amazing. It's a, it's a success for us. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, it's not a success of one individual, but collectively, if you see at the picture here, the brand Allure, A-L-O-R-E, Allure, all right? It's taken from the road that they used to be at the academy, Jalan Alo. They just add E at the back to make it sound international a bit, eh? Allure, right? So, as you can see, they work on the design, they work as, you know, all these photo shoot, they work on it themselves. These are, they, they comprise of batch from batch one, batch two, batch three, batch four, this is Aman, batch five, all of them work together and came up with the brand and all the sales and marketing, they do it on their own. This is during the launch at Rex KL, in, in KL, where they invite all our friends, our customers to come and buy and support the product because a portion of the sales goes back to the academy where we can empower more of their juniors. So it's amazing how they develop the product. And just to mark, just want to promo a bit, huh? the new drop of Allah coming soon. I think, inshallah, in early December, we have new designs from Batch 7, inspired by Batch 7. So please follow Discover Muay Thai on your Instagram, on your Facebook. We are on TikToks, but not, not uh, very active yet. All right? So wait for the new drop, the new design in, in early December, inshallah. Right? Amazing things are coming. Just a bit more before we open for Q&A. My next golden nugget, takeaway number four, is to define your own success. To some people, to most people, success means having a lot of money, being filthy rich. To some, success is having this, you know, luxurious car. To some, success is able to do different, different things in life, right? But for us, success is what you have seen just now from the four, five stories that I shared and many, many others. So we decide what's best for them. They themselves decide what's best for them. We don't dictate. Oh, you must be this, 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 this. We don't dictate. Oh, you must have this, this, this in your life. Yes, we do guide a little bit whenever they have you know, issues with their spouse and whatnot. But they determine, they define their own success. This is, I think, very, very important for aspiring entrepreneurs, aspiring social business entrepreneurs, is to really define your impact, the change that you want to bring to the society, the community that you are helping, and make sure it's sustainable for them to have a better life, right? And I think my last slide for today, and this is a bit deep. I'm, I apologize earlier. Please, please, please realize your purpose in life. Not just knowing the purpose of your life. Knowing is fine. Okay, I know the purpose of life. All right? But to actually realize it, take action and realize it. Just to share a story, guys, um, this is a bit uh, personal to me, but I hope you guys can get something out of this. Back in 2019, Alhamdulillah, I was very lucky um, to get the calling to perform Umrah um, just before the pandemic. The pandemic was in 2020, February, right? If I'm not mistaken, the lockdown. So we managed to go um, on December 2019 together with my wife and, his fa and her family, right? Alhamdulillah, I was, I, was, I was not expecting it. I was afraid at the same time because going to the holy place of Mecca is very, very, for me, was very scary because of my bad deeds and the, the dosa, dosa and whatever, lah, all right? I was very, very scared to perform Umrah at that time. But, you know, Allah knows best when I was there. The first day we landed, we went to Mecca first and then Madinah. When we were on the bus looking at 
the clock tower, right? I started to feel this, this one emotion. And as we drive closer and closer to Mecca, to Kaaba, I couldn't control it. Immediately, this, this, these tears just came out of nowhere. And when I saw Kaaba first time in, in my life, it really, really changed my life until today. Right? And I was lucky enough to, to visit uh, the cave of Hirak, right? Go Hirak, where, as we know, the first revelation was, was there. Our Prophet uh, Muhammad Wasallam got his first revelation at the, 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 uh, the cave of Hirak. And once you enter the cave of Hirak, it's a very small, you know, very small space. And at the end of the cave, there's a small opening where you can pick through. Once you pick through, you can see Kaaba right on point through that small opening of that cave of Hirak. So it's amazing. I had to, this privilege to witness this on, with my very own eyes. And when we were performing the Umrah, all of us were wearing the white ihram, right? And one thing that I definitely, definitely learned from this is human beings, we are all equal in the eyes of God. By wearing that ihram, you are, you are stripped naked, right? You, you don't wear anything under. You don't wear your watches, you don't wear your, your blinks, your whatever. Just that white cloth that shows every one of us are just the same, right? We are equal in the eyes of God. So therefore, now looking back at, at all this experience, right, me personally, I have concluded that my purpose of life is definitely to recognize and to worship the Most High. Because, so the question is how, right? For me, it's easy. Amal ma'ruf, nahi mungkar. What is amal ma'ruf, nahi mungkar? You invite people to do good and avoid evil, right? So that's what we do in Discover Moita Academy. We want the, the best for the boys, you know? Because I want them to become the best practicing Muslim as possible by following the supreme guidance from the Most High. And He is the source of that objective morality that we as humans must follow. Why this is important? Because for me, it doesn't matter if you have the best economy in the world. It doesn't matter if you have the best technology on planet Earth. It doesn't matter if you have all, everybody in the world getting afraid with you. But without supreme guidance from the above and that objective morality, <laughs> you can just simply drop bombs on children and kill the innocents. And that's nothing in my eyes. That's nothing. You have no sense of morality and na'uzubillah, you will rot in hell in the afterlife. Thank you, Al-Bukhari International University. Thank you for having me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And I would like to open for Q&A session if any. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very, thank you very much to our speaker, Khairul Azri Muhammad Khalid, uh, for the valuable insight. Uh, there are a few things I'm pretty much sure that uh, everybody in the hall have learned. So everyone got their own key takeaway. Everyone got and they learned new things. Uh, what was very interesting for me is that everyone can be an entrepreneur. So it doesn't matter that you hold a degree in HRM, in economic, or whatever. If you have the will, you can be the entrepreneur and you can change the world. Especially 
uh, helping others is uh, a very unique way to contribute to the world. It's like uh, helping, you, you help someone else and then they help someone else, especially the people that are underprivileged and employed. So because they are uh, prone to drug addiction, to develop bad habits so that they can harm the community. So if you help them, then they will definitely help someone else and they will help someone else. So the chain goes on and on. It is a positive change and that's how people create a better world. Yes, that is very, very true. And it is also very inspiring to see that they have successfully overcome their addictions and past traumas with the help of Discover Muay Thai. And I believe that they deserve another round of applause for them, please. And also, we cannot forget how inspiring Mr. Kyle Azri, how, how he is so relentless in his mission to combat youth unemployment in Malaysia, while also helping them learn how to protect themselves by practicing Muay Thai. It's like killing two birds with one stone. How amazing is that? That's right. And I bet the audience are more inquisitive to know more about Muay Thai. So therefore, we will now open the, f we will now open the floor for a question and answer. Audience, if you have any question, you may walk to the nearest microphone. For the first floor, the microphone is located close to the camera. For the second floor, the, microphone, the mic is also located close to the camera. Uh, sorry to remind you, due to the time constraint, can we have three questions from the ground floor and three questions from the upper floor? Okay. principles of life living. I'm so inspired by today's talk. Uh, as a young student, the uh, common question for me is that I asked from the previous talks too. Uh, back then you started your business or the way of your living in 2014, it's like eight years before. So maybe you will be 26 or 27. Uh, I'm also a young entrepreneur, but I want to be a su financial sustainable entrepreneur. How can I be a financial sustainable entrepreneur in today's world? And what are those things that I could uh, like continue or that I can have in my life as an example that I can be a financially uh, sustained entrepreneur business? Sometimes I start business, but due to the less amount of income or less amount of being financial stable, I stop it. So how can I go with it? as you can give me as your suggestion or a answer of my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for the talk. That's, that's my, thank you. Thank you for the amazing question. Now, if you see, I purposely leave out the business part of the presentation. I didn't talk mostly. La, it's just the gym, right? So yes, at Discover Muay Thai, I'm, I'm going to share how we do it first and then I'm going to share how you can adapt this as well. This as well. Um, we have various products and services. We don't just bank on one product. So if I were a, a, a typical Muay Thai provider, right, Muay Thai gym owner, my gym is my only way of making revenue. Typically, how Muay Thai trainer, Muay Thai coaches, Muay Thai gym owners operate, right? But with Discover Muay Thai, we have diversified our mode of revenues. So we have um, the merchandise, we have services outside where, so at the gym, normal gym, lah, how it works, right? People come and pay subscription fee for one month, three months, six months, and you know, that's how we get, get the money. But we do also mobile training where we have our fleet of trainers from the boys, right? They go out and they go to schools, they go to universities, they go to corporate offices, they go to, um, you know, clubhouses, um, residential areas, and we train our clients at their preferred place. So instead of having our clients come to the gym, we go out to our clients. That's the second revenue model. Number three, we have um, boot camp model, right? Where once... In, in, in once in a month, twice a month, we have boot camp session where we encourage people from 
you know, the, the, the newbies who haven't had the opportunity to learn Muay Thai, to just come together at one of the parks and just try Muay Thai uh, boot camp, right? So we have different stations. So it's quite different from your normal Muay Thai um, training or Muay Thai drills. So that somehow attract um, clients as well on a big scale because each session 50, 100, you name it, right? It's a big group um, activity. We also have CSR partnership. Now, this is the most important part. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't find the, the, the person who, uh, who was asking just now, right? The most important part is our bulk of revenue doesn't come from the gym, doesn't come from the training. It's small money, but yes, it, it keeps the company growing. There's cash flow coming in. But our biggest pool of money comes from the CSR initiative, CSR partnership. How we do it? So we are the experts in youth development, right? So we, we approach corporates, partners, and we sell our service, you know, if they have specific communities that they want to empower. For example, we have Yayasan Hartalega. If you have heard of company Hartalega, the glove company, they have a Yayasan, a foundation, and they pay us our service fee to run programs for them. And it's in huge amount of money. And because of this service, we managed to endure pandemic. Because Muay Thai is, you know, contact sport. You cannot, have open, you cannot open your gym. You cannot go do personal training at, at your clients' houses and whatnot. We were totally shut down. But our CSR projects, we just pivot it to make it online and whatnot. So the money is still there. It's still in the account to keep us afloat. Right? So to answer your question, how to keep it financially sustainable, definitely to have all this business acumen in place. Yes, it's important to have the heart, the passion to help the community. But you need to take care of yourself first, the founding members, your team, your management team. Make sure you guys are able to put food on your table. You guys are, have bills to pay. And then, you know, all these other things came into place. So make sure you have a sustainable, feasible business model, a working business model, um, a marketable, feasible ideas that people want your product or services. All right? And then the social um, element comes along with the uh, financial side. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much for the question. Relations. So my question is, guide people with bad habit background is very difficult, and we all know that. And I think your academy is about maintaining good mental health in there, and also psychological things, right? So my question is, other than passions, may I know what is the main belief or main point that the management have of Muay Thai to build up those people in bad habits. We know that's very difficult to manage them, right? What is the main point, the main belief that you have to build them to become the good people itself? Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, hello. Yes, all right. Thank you. Thank you for the amazing question, all right? Yes, it's very, very difficult to change someone's habit, to change someone within the span of four months, right? So how we do this, how we did uh, Discover Muay Thai Academy is we reverse engineer the whole, you know, oh, you got to be this, oh, you got to do this, you got to, you know, all the rules and regulations. Yes, it's important, but we reverse engineer the psyche of our beneficiaries. How? Even before they join the academy, even before they join the academy officially on the first day of registration, we already have built that, that, that wall, sorry, we have broken that wall of trust with the beneficiary. Example, remember my, my, my engagement activities with the PPR communities? You know, we have one day festival, we, we do um, camping with them, we do different, different activities. We just lepak, tetari with them, watch football, MU versus Chelsea was the first event um, of the first batch eh, uh, with these boys. So we break that wall of trust 
first. Getting them to trust, eh, this abang-abang, who are these guys? Why are they coming in? Why, are, you know, why should we trust them? So by showing that you are trustworthy, you are really there to be with them, to guide them, to help them in whatever way is possible, that somehow won their heart already, number one. Right? Break that, that wall of trust even before the academy starts. Of course, once they join the academy, that's, that's where the routine starts, the, the drilling and whatnot on the mental side. Number two is don't just show heart in, 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 in having to see your organization or your, your social business become successful. No. That is the outcome of having the heart to really help them. You see the difference? The heart of wanting to see your social business grow and be successful and get more money and whatever and grow and expand, that's important, but that's an outcome of having the heart to really help your beneficiaries. That is your priority, to really help them. That's why my routine, as you saw on, on the video just now, I will spend at least half an hour to one hour which every single of them first phase, the early phase, so four months, right? The early month, in the middle, and also at the end. With each one of them, to just know what is your issue? Where do you want to go after this? Why you joined the academy? All these questions. Do you have issues with your family? Do you have issues with people outside? Do you owe some people money? Do you have issues with the authority? One case, uh, we had to go to, to, to court uh, to help one of the boys. So, different, different stories. So, the heart to really help your beneficiary is, I think, the most, the utmost important. And then eventually the outcome of it, your social business, inshallah, will grow. I hope that answers the question. And I know the time is, is very short. So, thank you so much for all the questions, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Khairul Azri. So, can we have the next question from the up floor? Please, ask your question and introduce yourself at the beginning. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Zinil Abidin Omar from Bachelor of Early Childhood Education. I'm from Nigeria. So, my question is uh, regarding what you have just shared. Uh, I believe what you have all done is you are not a fighter of Mute and you form this uh, Discover Mute, but first you s get the cert you get the certified certificate as a coach of Mute. So, and I believe like maybe there is student here on campus that they came from various countries and they want to do something similar to what you have done in their various countries when they graduate. So, and I believe they cannot do that without having that certificate as the coach of Mute. So, what I want to ask is. Being a student here, is there any way that someone can obtain the certificate to become Mute coach before they graduate so that when you go back to your various countries, they can form something similar so that they can also contribute to society? That's my question. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I, I thought the, <laughs> there are no questions left. I, I forgot there's, there's one upstairs. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, yes. At Discover Muay Thai, we just use Muay Thai as the tool to rope them in, to attract their attention, to get their interest. Because, you know, for the past five, ten years, Muay Thai, MMA, BJJ, you know, you name all these martial arts are getting traction, right? Getting interest from um, the whole world. The UFC is one championship, all these amazing events. So we were lucky that we use Muay Thai as a tool to rope them in. So to answer your question, yes. In Malaysia, there are governing bodies, there are authorities who certify Muay Thai coaches. Um, we have our local Persatuan Muay Thai Malaysia or the National Muay Thai Association who do um, basic certificate, right? Um, under, under state level, right? So you have to go to state level. So for Kedah, we have Kedah Muay Thai Association. So that's where you get your basic certification. And then as we, you progress along, your specific one course, sport sign level one, specific two, specific, specific three, all those are in Bukit Jalil. Uh, it's a centralized training. 
So yes, um, Persatuan Muay Thai Malaysia is the key person, key organisation to go to. And but I'm not sure about um, non-Malaysian. I have to check. Uh, maybe you can Google. But yes, there are available certification course out there. We ourselves get ourselves certified first before we start Discover Muay Thai because we have to have that credibility uh, on our own, right? Before we start. We were very, very new back then. The players of Muay Thai industry look at us like, what, what, what are you guys trying to do? Are you guys trying to build a cult or a new gang, you know, using Muay Thai? That's the, 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 similar, the, the common feedbacks that we got. So yes, we got ourselves certified and there, there are organizations who can certify you. Thank you for your questions. Maybe last one. Thank you, Mr. Khairul Azri uh, for the answer. Now, can we have one last question? Ah, it's okay, it's okay. Right. Hello, everyone. I hope to be well. As a student, I welcome you, Mr. Sp Speaker, to AIU. I'm Alisina Tanishwar from Bachelor of Computer Science of Al Bukhari International University from Afghanistan. Dear Mr. Speaker, as you talked about the rising power in which I transformative power for marginalized youth. About your topic, I'm going to ask two questions. Firstly, it's about how can the Muay Thai community and practitioners further enhance their efforts to make the sport more accessible and beneficial for young people facing socio-economic obstacles? It was my first question. Secondly, how does Muay Thai contribute to the empowerment and transformation of marginal, marginalized youth? Thank you very much. Sorry. Sorry, can you repeat your second question again? The second question yeah. is that how does Muay Thai contribute to the empowerment and transformation of marginalized youth? Okay, right. thank you. Thank you, thank you for the question. Um, first question first, um, how do Muay Thai practitioners reach out to more young people, right? So amazing question. It's a constant struggle by the Persatuan, of, uh, Persatuan Muay Thai Malaysia because we are part of the Persatuan as well um, under their social arm to reach out to more young people, um, grassroots development. So it's been a struggle definitely to convince people, to convince parents on Muay Thai, all right? So for the past five, six years, it's been amazing with engagement sessions like this, with programs in schools, we do awareness programs in schools, we do programs with community leaders, all right? There are efforts that be, that's being done with the states level and also uh, club level, and it's growing, alhamdulillah. And, and yeah, with only through this awareness campaign, awareness activities, going through schools, because as you know, in Malaysia, if you talk about Taekwondo, almost every school has Taekwondo, right? It's become, you know, very um, uh, general martial arts sports in, in, in the school. So we want to do the same with Muay Thai. So it starts with a really, really grassroots level um, development and amazing people, amazing different organizations are doing uh, the best they can to, to, to um, uh, spur more uh, development. To answer your second question, I think, um, as I mentioned earlier, Muay Thai has this value of respect, the discipline, um, the value of honor, and, and, and many other values. So how Muay Thai have, have impacted these boys is that through all these values, once they enter into the ring, once they are trained, once, once they kick the back, if the trainer asks them to kick 100, even at 50, they, 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 you know, first day, they get tired easily. So, the marginalized youth, they think, yeah, you know, I'm, I was from a gang, you know, I, I used to beat up people and everything, right? But once they are trained, when, once they train Muay Thai, once they spar with the coaches, now they know there are more people, you know, there are, there are people out there who are stronger than me, who can do more damage than me. So, they got humbled during the first week itself, right? So, that somehow gave them that worldview, that, 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 that perspective, that optics, that, hey, I'm not the best, right? I don't, I'm not the strongest. I'm not the most gung-ho, the, the, the one of the best gang members. No. At Muay Thai gym, you are a nobody. Even you are a world champion, you come back to the gym, you sweep the floor. Even you are a world champion, you come back to the gym, you wipe the mirror, right? You become... You know, you go back and you 
practice humility in Muay Thai and I'm sure other martial artists as well. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Um, now it's the end of the Q&A session. Thank you very much for the thoughtful questions and also insights from Mr. Kairul Azri. And as a token of appreciation for our speaker, Mr. Kairul Azri, we would like you to accept a gift in appreciation of your time spent with us today. Therefore, I would like to invi invite Yang Berbahagia Professor Emeritus Datu Dr. Abdul Aziz Bin Tajuddin, Vice Chancellor and President of AIU, to present the honorarium. Thank you, Yang Berbahagia, Professor Emeritus, Datu Dr. Abdul Aziz bin Tajdin. And a big thank you to our speaker, Mr. Khairul Azri, for the amazing lectures. All right, once again, for those who got the blue goodie bags, I hope you enjoy the Mojitas Lembu Berlaga sauce. And don't forget, we have many interesting booths outside located in the foyer. Apart from the social business booth that we have explained just now, we also have uh, from our Masa Malaysian Students Association where they are selling some sandwiches, chicken wrap, popia, and drinks. And I bet you're all hungry. So please feel free to buy and grab as much food and merchandise to show your support. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we end this event today, let's capture this moment by taking a group photo. Please remain seated as the group photo will be taken from the stage. Thank you. Can I have everyone into the center, please? Can uh, SRC uh, team close the door instead? Please, close all three doors. The rest, can you co uh, co press, compress in the middle? Can you move? Ini adik-adik daripada sekolah mana ni? Kita minta gerak ke tengah sikit ya. Terima kasih. Cikgu pun masuk sekali lah. Bukti kehadiran. Okay, come. Everyone, go to the center, please. Okay, ready? Okay, adik-adik, ready? Biar nampak kurus dekat depan kamera. Senyum sikit. Satu, dua, tiga. Smile. One more. Satu, dua, tiga. Okay, kita ambil candy sikit sebab formal sangat, tak best. It's not best to have a formal. So this is that, uh, Mr. Azri said, is a casual thing. Candy. Three, two, one. One more, last one. Last next position. Three, two, one. Last one for my video. Can you wave on my video? Okay, ready? The video ready? In three, two, one. One. Bye. Okay, thank you, everybody. And that's the end of our PLS today. And on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank everybody who attends this talk and also for those who are watching online through our YouTube channel. Last but not least, we would like to end this event with a pantun. Are you ready, Hikmat? Yes, I'm ready. All right. <clears throat> 
Bunga dedap di atas para Anak dusun pasang pelita Kalau tersilap tutur bicara Jemari disusun maaf dipinta Buah rambutan untuk dimakan Simpan sedikit buat cek siti Salah dan silap harap dimaafkan Ada jodoh berjumpa lagi Thank you so much Goodbye, Goodbye and, and see you, you again, again next year. year.